Okay, so we recognize that we are all coming to this presentation today with different levels of understanding about what microaggressions are. So we wanted to start off by providing you with a brief review of the construct and um, a discussion of some of the research documenting the impact of microaggressions on the therapy process. Briefly defined, microaggressions are subtle, often unintentional statements that reflect prejudice or discriminatory messages about various minority groups. And this construct was first developed around 1970 by a scholar named Chester Pierce. Uh, since that time and more recently, it has been popularized in the counseling literature by Sue and Sue, who identify three specific types of microaggressions. And as I'm reviewing each, if you all want to feel free to provide examples that you may have encountered of each type in the chat, that would be great. So the first uh, type of microaggression is microinsults. Those are unintentional comments or behaviors that demean a person's heritage or social identity. An example of that might be raising your voice or speaking slowly when talking to a blind person. The next category are micro assaults, comments, behaviors, or environmental cues that mo more overtly convey discriminatory messages. One of the most common ones that we typically tend to think of when we're thinking about micro assaults is using the word gay to describe awkward or socially undesirable behavior or appearance. And then finally, micro invalidations, which are comments or behaviors that negate or dismiss the cognitive, affective, or experiential realities of individuals from marginalized backgrounds. For examples, comments such as, when I look at you, I don't see color which would reflect a colorblind racial attitude that tends to negate the experiences of people of color in our country. Um, what's important to note about microaggressions is that as is uh, stated in the definition, they tend to be more, oh, excuse me, covert messages of discrimination as, a, as opposed to overtly uh, racist um, messaging. So these, types of racism tend to have an effect on the people to whom they're targeted because um, they often create a sense of confusion for these individuals. Um, they often leave them in a place feeling empowered or excuse me, disempowered um, and uh, may even contribute to psychological symptomology that they might eventually even end up presenting in therapy for things like depression anxiety, low self-esteem. So when we're thinking about the impact of microaggressions, it can be important to think about them across two levels in the counseling process, but then also how they might be affecting the way that the client is relating to the world outside of therapy. Okay. 